Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to take care of isopods. Not only that, I'm going to teach you how to breed them where you can breed thousands on your own. It's super easy. Let's get into the video, shall we? So isopods are extremely easy to take care of. They're roly polies, they're pill bugs, all kinds of names they have. But the first thing you're going to want to have is a tub like this, a container. I think this is a stair like container is what it's called. That's it right there. It is the 12 quart one. You can use all kinds of small containers. If you have a little bit of you know isopods, you don't have to use a very large container. If you have a lot of isopods, you can use a little bit bigger. You can use a 10 gallon tank. The container really doesn't matter. I like to use these because they're just easy to stack. And if you don't stack, you could put the holes on top of this right here. But if you are gonna stack, you are gonna have to make some ventilation holes. And if you make the ventilation holes, I like to use a drill with like a 1 8 drill bit. And I'll just drill them alongside. You don't have to be very pretty about it. Just have some holes for ventilation. You don't have to have much ventilation either. You can just do like four holes on the side of this, four holes on the side of that, maybe two in the front, bam, you're good. That's plenty of ventilation for these guys. These dudes live underground, under stuff a lot of times, so they're very used to little, not a lot of airflow. You don't have to go crazy with the ventilation. But you get your storage tub, you lift it off, it's empty, you add some substrate. My favorite substrate to use for isopods, one of the best out there, is Repti soil. It's super easy to get, it's super great for them. But you could also just use garden soils. A lot of times people get scared of the perlite in the garden soils. That's totally fine, don't have to worry about it. Isopods are very hardy, you don't have to worry about using a garden soil, just a basic garden soil. You, you, if you use one with manure, remember it's gonna stink, but they will also eat that up because they eat decaying matter and poop, so you really don't have to worry. But I'm using some Repti soil, very easy to use. I don't like using cocoa fiber because cocoa fiber dries out easy and you don't want these guys to dry out. If they dry out, they will die. That's why I don't use cocoa fiber, I use Repti soil. So anyways, you just get that soil, throw it in here like so, bam. Look at that. And this is a gallon of soil. It covered this 12 quart tub perfectly. Now I've already used this in another tub. That's why it has leaves and stuff like that in it. But I usually want at least three inches of substrate minimum. As you can tell right here, this has uh, roots from a pothos plant. Like I said, this is soil I've used before. It's a great soil, but I'm gonna use it for these isopods for now. But anyways, like I said, they're on the quartz, like these little things right here, they have like these little like, I don't know what they're called, like these, I like to fill that dirt up to that spot right there. And that's where I put my dirt at. And then like I said, you want three inches minimum. Usually you don't want it to, if you get too low a substrate, it's harder to keep moist, it dries out, stuff like that. But the biggest thing a lot of people do when they're keeping ice pods and they get it wrong is they don't put leaf litter down. You want tons of leaf litter on top of this for your isopods. They eat the leaves, it's decaying matter. If you don't, if you forget to feed them, the, they'll eat the leaves, you don't have to worry about it. And the leaves will keep the moisture in the soil easier. Next thing you wanna do is you can get some wood. I use cork bark, you get cork bark, I have a link below. But I use cork bark, I'll just put it in the enclosure. You can even use stone, like little rocks, like kind of flat rocks, really thin. Um, put that in here, but you just put some of that right there. That way they'll go into it, underneath it, have a place to hide. And then after that, you just get your leaves. I got this from my backyard. I have leaves linked down in the description as well, but I got these from my backyard. A tree branch broke off. I went and I collected that. And I just go ahead and put it in here. And you wanna put it covering all of the dirt. You went all over the place. I'll even kind of get it, kind of crinkle it up in my hand a little bit like that. You went it all over to blankets the soil, and even this is, I'm gonna have to go back outside and get some more. I want more leaves than this right here, because they will eat through this extremely fast. But anyways, this right here, that easy. That's how you set it up. This is the setup for the enclosure. This is all you need. Super simple, you don't have to go hard. You can miss it like once a week, or if it looks a little dry, maybe even once every two weeks. Once you put the leaves on here, it stays pretty good. You might have to miss it like once a month, but it'll stay pretty moist. If it does look a little dry, then definitely missed it. I missed it once a week, just a quick mist, that's gonna get you good. You don't want it very swampy, you just want it a little moist. Now, feeding-wise, a lot of people will feed them flakes, any type of fish Flakes will do okay. You can just get it, you can just sprinkle it around, put it somewhere right there in the enclosure, like right there, just throw it somewhere. Bam, you're done. A couple pink pinches, we'll just throw it around. That's perfectly fine, it's perfectly good. A lot of times what I do is I feed like bearded dragons, my Euromastics, like greens and stuff, and the leftover greens that they don't eat for the day, I'll just get it and I'll just chunk it in here. And those isopods will tear that up. 
You can even throw like one little baby carrot, a small baby carrot in here, just throw it in there and leave it in there. And eventually they'll just eat all of that up. You can throw some greens in there. Any decaying matter they will eat. Even say you have a new ball python or a new snake and you're feeding it pinky mice and they didn't want it. You could throw that in here and they will eat the flesh off the bone. It sounds crazy, I know it. It sounds wild, but like frozen thawed. You can put it in here and they will eat that as well. Now, eventually if it does stink, you just have to take it out because you know they're not that fast at eating. But if you have a large colony, they will eat it very quickly. So that easy, that's how you take care of isopods. You don't have to have them on high temperatures or anything like that. Basic room temperature will do like 68, 72 degrees around there is perfect for these guys. And that's all it takes to breed thousands. I breed tons of these guys. And I even have some right here to show you. This is, I think this is my dwarf white. No, 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 this one is just my powder blue isopods. No, sandstones, this is my sandstone isopods. I forget to mark them, but anyways, yeah. So if you just come up here, Look right there, you'll have some s popping up around here. And also I breed springtails, you really can't see it. But anyways, there's powder blues, there's sandstones. These are not the powder blue ones, these are sandstones. I keep saying that, forgive me. Some sandstone isopods. I use these for my arid enclosures, works great. And the powder blues I'm gonna be putting in here. And when I show you how much I breed, it's gonna be pretty wild. But anyways, yeah, I breed tons of these guys. Super easy. If you want a good isopod for a tropical enclosure, this one right here is a perfect one. This is a dwarf white isopods right here. I just put these in here last night as well. And I'm just doing a bunch of rearranging for my isopods. That's why I said, that's why it looks kind of bare and it's not like set up like the other one. But if you look in here, it's just gonna be tons of isopods as well. It's super simple to care for these guys. All you really want is to make sure it's moist, not soaking wet, just moist. Okay, when you touch it, you can feel that it's a little damp. It's not soaking wet though. If you squeeze it, water's not dripping off. It's just a little damp. That's what you want for your isopods. And this type of care goes for all isopods and springtails. This is a good type of care. I even had some super arid ones, some sandstone isopods. That's what I like to use for my arid enclosures. Sandstone ones, it gets a little dry in there. I still keep it a little bit moist in my arid enclosures. I have really thick substrate, like six inches of substrate. So down below it stays moist. So if they do, it gets a little dry, they will dig farther down. I actually see them through the glass digging farther down. But that's all I have for you. I hope this helped. If it did, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.